So just as an introduction to computer architecture and computer hardware, we're going to talk about components that make up uh, how, the pro how the processor inside your computer performs tasks. And one of the biggest tasks is going to be to record a piece of information into memory so when we come around later on, we can um, get the piece of information back. Okay. So, has anyone seen, uh, so this is a, like, you know, copper wiring. And has anyone seen either this symbol or this symbol before? Yes. Okay, what's this one? A resistor. A resistor. And what basically does that do? Resist. Electric. Resist. Right, push back. Right? That's why it's called it a resistor, because it resists. So electricity is trying to kind of come through here, and it's pushing back. And then different resistors could be rated at how hard they push back. Um, and this, this thing here? Trans the transistor. Okay. And you remember just basically what a transistor it has three, three uh, either inputs or outputs. But you remember what it does? How it works? What's that? Okay, so basically if, if current is coming into it, so this is like the thing we control. We could either apply electricity or not. And if we apply electricity, it kind of it lets it transmit through. And if we don't apply electricity, it kind of blocks the electricity from coming through. Okay, so if we put a resistor and a transistor together like this, um, and we supply electricity coming in through the top, the electricity is going to try to get to ground. So this is a simple meaning ground, meaning no, no electronic potential. So electricity would always try to seek to ground. So the electricity would try to go down this path. If the transistor was open, so it's kind of like we have a door, we're letting electricity flow through. So if it's open, the electricity coming in through the top will go to the bottom. And therefore, because of this resistor, it will be pushed like, it won't go out of this, this direction. Okay? But if we don't apply electricity here, then what would happen? Well, then this electricity coming in through the top can't get through, so it has no choice but to go out the resistor. The resistor lets electricity go through, but it, it kind of pushes back a little bit. So if there's no electricity here, then there will be electricity coming out of here. Right? So from the point of view of if you forget about this electricity coming in the top and you forget about this electricity going out the bottom, from the point of view of like here's our input and here's our output, this is a piece of electronics that whatever is here, the opposite is here. If I put electricity here, then no electricity comes out. If I put no electricity here, then electricity comes out. And we're going to use the convention that 1 means electricity and 0 means no electricity. Okay, so this is sometimes referred to as a knock gate. Um, so first of all, the transistor. This is kind of what a transistor looks like. So this was invented in here in New Jersey back in, like I think, 1931. And it's a three-legged... Um, piece of equipment. One is where you apply electricity, and the other is where it has an input and an output. And then this thing is where, you know, that electronics of letting it pass through is, is uh, the logic is put in here. <coughs> and the place where, the Bell Labs, where the place it was invented, this is actually the water tower for the building, where, uh, it actually was not the building where the, the transistor was um, invented, but Part of the pit, some of the people worked on it, worked, worked in that building. But anyway, so this is the actual water tower, but they made the water tower look like a transistor. A transistor is very, very small, and the water tower is very, very large. But um, so anyway, so if we wire, this is just a smaller picture of what we looked at before. We're basically saying that um, this piece of electronics, we're going to draw it like this. So this will be like a little cartoon we draw, which really means this thing. And we're only going to represent the input and the output. We're not going to draw the voltage coming in through the top, and we're not going to draw its connection to the ground. So basically, if you put a 1 here, you get a 0 here. And if you put a 0 here, you get a 1 coming out of here. So a 0 here would mean a 1 coming out of here. 
So I just wanted to show you the inside of this, so you don't think, you know, so for, for example, when a 1 is applied here and a 0 comes out, you might think, hey, if I'm shooting electricity in and it's not coming out, you know, is it going to cause a fire or something like that? But it's not causing a fire. It's basically taking the electricity coming in through the top and letting it run out the bottom. We're just not drawing where it's going out. And then this one kind of looks like magic. You know, I don't apply electricity and then shh, all of a sudden electricity comes out. Where's it coming from? Where it's coming from, it's coming in from the top and going out here. So there's no magic involved. So this is just a piece of electronics. Whatever you put here, the opposite comes out here. Okay. So, our, and our goal in this is to try to build electronic memory. Okay, so now what if we put two transistors in serial together? What would that do? Okay, so if the electricity coming in through the top in order for it to go to the ground and not come out of here, what has to happen? We have to have electricity on here and, very important, and electricity on here. If electricity is on in both, then the electricity coming in through the top will go to ground and therefore nothing will come out. But if one of these, if either one is a zero, then the electricity has to go out of here. So this is a piece of electronics where as long as they're both on, nothing comes out. But if either one or both are shut off, the electricity has no choice but to come out of the top. So this is, so the output will be electricity on, except in the one case where they're both on, the inputs are both on, then nothing comes out. So what would this be in English? In English, this would be like, it's not, we're not saying that in order to get electricity out, both inputs have to be on. It's not this one and this one has to be on for electricity to come out. It's this one and this one have to be on in order for there to be no electricity come out. It's like the opposite of anding them together. So we refer to this thing as a not and gate. Sometimes it's referred to as a NAND gate. And the way we draw that is we draw this picture. This circle means the opposite. So it's kind of like, so what this is going to really be, this is going to be an AND gate, and then take that result and flip it. Make a 0, a 1, and a 1, a 2. Okay, what if we put the two transistors, not in a row, but parallel to each other? Okay, so now the electricity could either go through this transistor out to ground, or, and that's the key word, or, not AND, or, it could go down this transistor and out. So if this one is shut off and this one, so if either one is open, the electricity will go to ground and not come out here. So the logic here is two zeros. If this is shut off and this is shut off, then it has no choice but to come out. This would be a one. But if anything is a one, or both of them are one, then no electricity comes out. So this would be, you know, same thing as before, it would be the opposite of an or. So we're not saying, well, as long as this is a one, or this is a one, or they're both a one, the output would be one, the output's actually zero. So this is like the opposite of an or. So we call this a not or gate or a nor gate. Okay. All right, so now we're basically just taking, at this point, we're basically just taking resistors and transistors and wiring together and looking at results and saying, oh, all right, that's, that's okay. Maybe can we use this thing? Okay. If we took a not OR gate and then took its output and just flipped it over, zeros and ones and ones and zeros, that's really an OR gate, right? So we know how to wire together a not OR gate. We know how to wire together a not gate. Put the two together, we have an OR gate. Same thing is true with AND gates. We could take a NOT AND, put its output through a NOT, and it becomes an AND gate. There's no rule that says we have to have exactly two inputs. We can have as many as we want. Okay. Uh, wow. Well, we're going to run out of seats. Be careful with the camera. Okay. Um, Okay, so there's no limit on how many um, inputs we can have. We could have three, four, six OR inputs. 
or Andy. We could work together. The other thing we could do is we could just have one, two, and a third one, and a fourth one. So we, we could really have as many inputs as we want. So, um, okay. So now another side piece of equipment. And I'm going to just use the idea that the, you know, this is an AND gate, and circles are not gates, even though it's the triangle with the circle. Sometimes an abbreviation is just a circle. So this is a piece of electronic equipment we're going to call a decoder. I'm going to use this in a little while. So, so we have, generally our inputs are on the left and our outputs are on the right. So we have two inputs and we have four outputs. And what is this thing doing? Well, we can set either one of these wires to zero or one. And I'm using the color scheme that this green is like zero and red is a one. So, if we take the two inputs and we reverse both of them, we run them through NOT gates and then feed them into an AND gate, and then we take this input, feed one through a NOT gate and the other one not through a NOT gate, and then we take these two and we feed this one straight in and this one through a NOT gate, and then we take the two inputs and feed them in untouched. We've done all four combinations of these two inputs. So what does this do? Well, it basically says whatever number we put here, whatever binary number we put here, will determine which one of these four lines gets turned on. So if I put a zero and a zero here, these two zeros will become two ones, which will make this line turn on. Does that make sense? So I can do, so with, with two input bits, I can do four possible inputs, zero, zero, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And what this thing will do is, of the four possible inputs, it will turn one of these four lines on, and all the other ones will be shut off. Right? So whatever I put here will cause exactly one of these lines to turn on. So if I put a 0 here and a 1 here, this 0 gets, runs through this NOT gate, turns into a 1, and this one runs straight into here, and we have two ones coming into an AND gate, which means that will be turned on. All the other ones will have some kind of a problem. Um, this one will become a zero, which is why this line will be off. This zero coming into here will be a zero, which is why that one's off. And this zero going into this one This, you're right, this zero going into this one will make that one. So really what we're doing is a decoder is basically we put a binary number here and, it, and then it indicates which one of those lines we want to turn on. So we're going to be using this piece of electronic in a second. And why are we doing this? So suppose you wrote code in Java or C++, something like A equals 5 and then B equals 6 and then C equals A plus B. How does a computer do this? How does a computer that has no brain, just running on electricity, store a 5 somewhere, and then store a 6 somewhere different, and then go back and get the 5 and the 6 and take them and add them together and somehow put the result in another storage location? So we write code in decimal format. These are decimal numbers. Right, they go, you know, like 999, then the next number is 1,000, that kind of thing. But the computer is going to convert them into their binary equivalent, zeros and ones, because computers run on electricity, and electricity is either on or off. Okay, so uh, we would convert the number 5 into a decimal format, like 0101, zero, zero, one, which is binary for 5. And then we would want to record that somewhere. Okay, so we have to figure out a way to record zeros and ones. What I mean by record, I need a piece of electronic equipment. I could say, set this to one, and then remember it, freeze it. So when I come back later, it'll be what I set it to 10 minutes ago. So we need some kind of piece of equipment that has maybe two inputs. One, the value we're setting it to, and another one to say, okay, open the door and let the new value come in. And then maybe this line will then shut off to say, 
now remember that value. So if anyone, someone changes this input, ignore the input. We froze it to what it was before. Like we want to write a five, we'll write the five, and then if this input value starts changing, it'll be left alone. So we need to design a piece of equipment like this. If we did this, this would actually be one bit of memory. So it's, it's not only something we can set a value to, but we can set it, and then once we set it, we can say, now freeze it. Don't change it until later on we decide to change it. Okay. So somebody came up with the idea that if you take an OR gate, but if you take not OR gates, and wire them together this way, well, first of all, we'll do is we'll just look at what happens. If you take an OR gate, run its output, and, and I kind of, this is really a not OR gate, but I kind of separated just so we can follow the electricity. So we're taking an OR gate, then running its output into a not, and using one input from the outside, one that we can control, and the output of one of these not OR gates gets fed in as input to the one next to it. This is kind of like a sister not OR gate. And then its output is fed as input into the first one. So they're kind of, you know, each one is feeding the other one. So you might think, why would someone design this? But let's just follow what happens. We have a piece of electronic equipment where we can set two inputs, and it will have two outputs. If we set the two inputs as follows, if we put a zero here and a one here, let's see what happens. This one goes through this OR gate. So if you have an OR gate that has two inputs and one of them is a one, what will its output be? One, because it doesn't matter what the other one is. It's an OR gate. If it was an AND gate, we'd have to say, what's the other one? So this will be a one, goes through a NOT gate, so a zero comes out of here. This zero goes into here, combined with this zero would be a zero runs out of a NOT gate, becomes a 1, and this 1 comes into here, that 1 doesn't affect that OR gate. So, so if you put a 0 here and a 1 here, the output is 1 and 0. Basically, like it flips the outputs over. Right? Okay. Based on symmetry, the same thing's true here. If we put a 1 and a 0, this 1 makes this a 1, which makes this a 0. This 0 combined with this 0 makes this a 0, which makes this a 1. So if we put a 1 here and a 0 here, it comes out 0 and 1. Okay, that makes sense. Now, here's where, I guess the hardest part of the whole, um, this one is like the hardest one to understand. This one, if we happen to set, so the, the other two combinations, we had 0, 1, and 1, 0 on the last slide. Now look, let's look at 1, 1, and 0, 0. So if we have 1 and 1, this 1 makes this a 1, makes that a 0. This 0, combined with this one makes that a one and that a zero. So if we put a one here and a one here, we get two zeros coming out. Yeah, that one's kind of, un kind of uninteresting. This one is the most interesting one. <clears throat> what if you said, so just be careful how you answer this question. What if you set this to zero and this to zero? What are the two outputs? One? What? Are they both one? So let's say, let, well, let's, well, what do you think? Would it be one, a zero, or? Both zero? Mm -hmm. It keeps changing? Uh, all right, wait, so let's see. Well, okay, so we had one. Both ones, both zeros, and then once it keeps changing. Any other, any other guesses? As you remember, it keeps changing this one zero and zero one zero zero. So like this will be a one and this will be a zero, and then this will be a zero and this will be a one. It keeps going back and forth. Uh, back and forth. Well, let's say. All right. Well, how about this? Okay. So this zero coming in, this is an OR gate. So what will this be? If this is a zero, what will this be? What? 
one. Depends on the other one. That's the answer. Whatever this was, if this was a zero, then this is a zero. If this was a one, then it's a one. So the answer is you don't know. It, it's whatever that was. That's uh, it's a you know it's not a you might think that's not a good answer, but it's the best we could do. We can't. We don't know what that is. So it's whatever this was. Now, what is this one? This one is going to be the opposite of this one. But we don't, we don't know what this is, but we know this one's going to be the opposite. Okay. So this will be whatever that was, and this will be the opposite of whatever that was. So blue and purple, magenta, whatever you call that color, they're going to be the opposite of each other, but we don't know what they are. So if we have a zero here and a zero here, whatever this was, Whatever this was will come out of here, and the opposite will come out of here. This being the opposite will come out of here, and the opposite will come out of here. So these will be opposites. And what will their values be? Their val the value of this will be whatever it was right before <laughs> we set these to zero. Whatever it was before. If this was a 1, and then we set these two to zero, this one would have fed this one, making this a one, making this a zero, this zero would make this a one. So if it was one before, so whatever it was right before we turned it to zero, zero, whatever that was, it'll stay that way. We don't know if it's zero or one, and we have to know what it was before. So this is the most interesting one. This is where we can, we can set the va we we can say whatever the value is, now freeze it, which is really going to be memory. Remember it and don't change it because I want to come back later on. So, for example, if we want to write a five into field A, we're really writing zero one zero one. If we had four of these things, if we had four of these. We could put, you know, one zero here, which would make a one come out of here and a zero here. And then, so we'd say one zero and then zero zero, and then it would remember it. <laughs> we'd do that like four times, and we could be able to set the field. So, with the zero and the one, we control what these are. We can make one a one and one a zero. And one. You know, we can set it to whatever we want. If we then set them to zero zero, it says, okay, whatever they are, freeze it stay that way. So, so now we add just a little bit more. We're going to have, here, here's the two inputs, and we're going we're gonna to have one input which we send into the top one and we send its opposite into the bottom one. This is for setting. Wait, so a couple things we're going to do. We're going to take We're going to take this piece of equipment. We're going to put these. We're going to wire these two together. Whatever we send in here, we'll send in the opposite here. That's for setting it. And then we're going to have another piece of wire that says, if I turn this wire to zero, then I'm going to send in two zeros, which means I'm going to freeze it. So that's what that's what this ends up being. So oh, and the third thing we're going to do is we're going to recognize that this wire and this wire will always be the opposite of each other so we can get rid of one. So we're just going to like get rid of that one and then we're going to join these two together so we can put in a one and a zero or a zero and a one for setting it. And then I'm going to have another wire that shuts them both off when I want to freeze it. So this is a new piece of equipment. So for example, if I, so now we have two inputs and one output. One output because we just, we kind of like took a scissor and we cut off that one. So we have one output now. So the thing is this, if I want to set this field, if I want to set this wire to the value of zero, I would put a one in the top and a zero in the bottom. Right? No, the other way around. I, put a, I would put a zero in the top and a one in the bottom, and the zero in the top would come out the bottom, you know, they would crisscross, right? And then if I want to remember it, I would send two zeros in. 
and then it would freeze. So step one would be take the value I want to set it to, which is zero, and turn this wire on, meaning accept new data. So this zero comes in here. This zero turns into a one, so I'm putting a zero here and a one here, which makes a zero come out of that wire. And it's accepting input because I set this to one. Now the next thing I do is I set this one to zero, and if I put two zeros into AND gates, two zeros come out. So when I set this one to zero, that sends in two zeros, which freezes this. It just stays. And whatever, now if I start playing around with this one, if I change this to one, it's going to be ignored, right? It would be ignored because I have two zeros here. So a one going here would cause a zero to come out here, and a one going here would cause a, I'm sorry, yeah, a one going here would cause a zero here. They would both stay zero. So even if I change the input value, as soon as this turns to zero, it's been set. It won't change. So this is a piece of equipment that I can set and remember. That's the most important thing. I set it with this field, and then I remember it with this field. So just, just to show that we get the idea, if I wanted to set this wire to a 1 and then have it remembered 10 minutes later, I want it to still be a 1, what two steps would I have to do? I would set this to 1 and set this to 1, meaning accept new, a new value. Then once I give it a little time, let the electricity flow through, then I shut this off. I turn this to 0 and now it's frozen. So that's how it's, So I can set this to a 1 or to a 0 and then have it remembered. Okay. Oh, yeah, so this is showing how to set a tool one. So I put a one here and a one here. This one goes into here. This one becomes a zero down here. So a one up here and a zero down here causes them to crisscross. So they call this thing a flip-flop because it crisscrosses when you're setting it. And a one comes out of here. The zero comes out of here, but we cut that wire off. And then we set them both to zero, and it freezes. It stays remembering that the value's been set to one. So this is how you set one bit of memory to the value of one. And there's two steps to it. OK. So now we want to just talk about the um, transferring a piece of memory from one location to another location. So suppose you had, and this is, I mean, no computer would have this, but it gets across the idea. So we talked before, we had a decoder. The decoder has two inputs and four outputs. And whatever value you set it to determines which one of these lines gets turned on. One gets turned on and all the other ones get turned on. So suppose, this is a silly, you know, computer piece of computer memory, but suppose I had four one-bit memory cells, and they all had a value coming out of them. And I decided I wanted to pick one of them and take one of their values and put it over here. This is another memory cell. I want to transfer data. So that would be like if you had a line of code that said uh, C equals A. You're taking the values of A in one piece of memory, and you're transferring them somewhere else. And you're picking which one you want to transfer. So suppose I had, uh, I'm just trying to keep this simple, four bits of memory, and I decided right now I'm in the mood to transfer the second one. This could be, so A could be a zero or a one, B could be a zero or a one, C could be a zero or one, or D could be a zero or a one. I want to transfer this one bit over to here. So we are, this is like a very, very small scale of reading memory. So how would we do that? Well, I'd say, okay, out of these four pieces of memory, which one do I want? This one will be represented by the binary number 00. zero. This will be zero, 01. This will be 10, and this will be 11. One, one. So whatever number I put here, 0, 1, the 0 here and the 1 here will cause the decoder to turn this wire on. And this wire, this wire, and this wire will all be turned off. Right? That's how a decoder works. So this wire being turned off runs into an AND gate with the value of the A cell. 
what will come out of this AND gate? If this one is zero and this one is, I don't know what, zero or one, I'm not sure, what would the output of an AND gate be? Zero. This will cause it to be zero. So a zero is going to come out of here. Now with this wire on, and the reason it's on is because I put a zero here and a one here. I've decided I'm interested in this one. This wire being on goes into this AND gate, and the value of B, which may be a zero or maybe a one, also goes into the AND gate. So what's the output of that AND gate? Whatever B is. Maybe zero, maybe one. Whatever. So this wire is whatever B is. This wire is definitely zero. <clears throat> and then C, same idea, this zero and the value of C get anded together, the output is zero. This zero and the value of D get anded together, the output is zero. Now I take all four of these, zero, whatever B was, zero, and zero, and I OR them together in a big four input OR gate, what will the output of this be? whatever B was. right. So really what I'm doing is I'm saying I, I put in an address out of, out of 0, 1, 2, or 3. I pick the one I'm interested in. And what am I effectively doing? I'm really taking all of these values and ORing them together. But whatever number I put here, I'm going to zero out the ones I don't want. So I'm really, I'm basically saying give me all the memory, but zero out everything except the one I actually care about. So if I put a num so if this is my memory and I put a number here and I wait a little time for you know the electricity has to go through the resistors and transistors and whatever inside here I need a little time for it to flow through but in a little while if I turn the bit on that allows this value to come in and then give it enough time and then shut it off I will capture the value of B here so this is how computers transfer data from memory here's how we read from memory okay. Okay, now suppose, and now I'm just making the example a little bit bigger. Instead of having individual memory cells, I'm going to group memory cells together. Because usually you want to record a number like five, you know, you need at least four. How many bits? You need at least three bits to record a number like five. So to not make the picture too clumsy, I decided to group memory cells together in sets of four which is sometimes called a nibble. Have you ever heard that? Like you've, heard, you've heard a byte is 8 bits? You group 8 bits together, it's called a byte. A half a byte is called a nibble. Have you ever heard that expression? Nibble? Okay. That's kind of, yeah, it's kind of outdated now, but, but they used to call 4 bits together a nibble. So anyway, the reason I'm using a nibble is because it's, it's, it's clear. I think if I used a byte, the picture would be, have twice as many wires and we couldn't follow it. So anyway, same idea. I have a decoder down here. So I have these four bits, maybe this is memory location A, and maybe this is memory location B, and this is memory location C, and this could be, you know, the programmer puts in a variable name and it gets assigned to memory location. <coughs> so my goal is to take either these four bits, or these four bits, or these four bits, or these four bits, and copy them down to another set of four bits. So when you group bits together, and package them together as one unit, that is usually called a register. A collection of bits is called a register. So we have a 4-bit register, a 4-bit register, 4-bit register, 4-bit register, and then another register to receive data. <coughs> so I can say either send me this set of 4, this set of 4, this set of 4, this set of 4, and put them here. So how can I do that? Same idea. We have a value on a decoder. So if I put a zero and a zero here, this decoder will turn, it says four lines coming out. This is the zero, zero line. This is the zero, one. This is the one, zero, and this is the one, one. So if I put a zero and a zero here, this wire turns on, these three turn off. This wire being on, these run into, <laughs> these are all AND gates. <coughs> I'm taking these four values and running them into four AND gates with the wire that's on. So what would the output of these four AND gates be? <coughs> What's that? Zero. All zeros. No, if, the, if this wire is on, if this wire is on, then the input, this is on plus whatever A was. 
Right, it would depend. Right, so I'm making them blue, meaning <coughs> the values coming out of these four wires will be A, B, C, and D. Whatever they were, zeros or ones, that's what's going to flow out. <coughs> and with this line off, zero, 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 zero going into AND gates guarantees zeros coming out of AND. So these will be for sure. So the values of E, F, G, and H will not come through here. Zeros will come out. And same thing here. Zeros will come out of here. Zeros will come out of here. And then once again, we take all the outputs and run them into a big OR gate. So in this OR gate, I have 0, 0, 0, and A. So this OR gate has four inputs, 0, 0, 0, and whatever A was. So the output is going to be whatever A was. Right? So by putting a 0 and a 0 here, this A is being or together with this E, but this E has been zeroed out. And the I and the I has been zeroed out, and the M and the M has been zeroed out. So only A makes it down. Same thing is true with B, C, and D. So if I wanted to, suppose I wanted to not transfer A, B, C, and D to here, but instead I wanted to transfer I, J, K, and L down there, what would I have to do? Suppose I decided I don't want the first one, I don't want the second one, I want the third one, the third row to get transferred. One and zero, right? If I put a one here and a zero here, this line will shut off and this line will turn on. And then this line turning on will allow these four values to flow through and this line shutting off will zero these values out. So if I did that, it would be like this. Right, so I make this a 1 and a 0 going into the decoder. That shuts this line off, turns this line on, and that allows these four AND gates to let these values flow through and shuts these four off. And now I, K, J, and L show up down here. So it can control which set gets moved around. So that's really all we're doing. We're just moving data around. But now you can kind of see, oh, four bits together, I can record a number like five. I could say, if I set this to a zero, this to a one, this to a zero, and this to a one, I'd put a five here. If I set this to zero, this to a one, this to a one, and this to a zero, I'd put a six here. Now I can say, get me the value of five, get me the value of six, and maybe I can have a bunch of these things and record them and then add the number together. Now I have to just figure out how do we write values back to memory, right? Because we said we're going to run code like A equals, A equals 5, B equals 6, and then C equals A plus B. And then we have to take the, the A plus B value, which would be 11, and we have to store that somewhere back into memory. So now we have to figure out how to write back to memory. So now instead of taking memory and dumping its value somewhere, now we want to take a value and write it back to memory. So how do we do that? So pretty much the same idea. Remember what a memory cell is. It has two inputs. One input says accept a new value. The other input is and here's the value. And then once the value is set, we then shut it off so it remembers its value. So memory cells have two inputs. And if you turn one on, the other one will be the new value you're setting it to. If you shut it off, it stays whatever it was before. <clears throat> so if we wanted to take the, va the values of W, X, Y, and Z, and we have four sets of places to put them in, we pick the one we want to write to, and we put that on a decoder. Now I, I probably should have wrote decoder here just to be consistent with the last one, but as we move into computer architecture, the name of this decoder is going to be the memory address register, the register where the place where we're writing to. So we decide which one we're going to pick. So if we put a zero and a one here, this is the zero zero line, zero one, one zero one one. So that will turn this line on. This line on turns these on. So you remember last time I had uh, the two bits 
the one was set, uh, the setting and the value we're setting it to, they were coming in on the left side. I kind of made this one, the set one comes into the bottom and the value we're setting it to comes in on the side. So, okay. So what I'm basically saying is allow, I want to open this, 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 and this to, re, to be set to a brand new value. And I want this one, A, B, C, and D, to ignore this. Leave, stay whatever value you were before. Don't, I don't want to accepting the new value. I've just decided I want to write this value to this location. And I want this and this and this to be left alone. So I pick the one I want to write to, which causes that one to open up to receive a new value. And I'm basically going to wire all of these values into every possible memory location. So this value could be written here, but I shut it off. So it's going to stay whatever it was before. It's not going to take on the value W. Right? W could be 0 or 1. A could be 0 or 1. It's going to stay A because it was set to A before and we're not trying to change it now. But W, which gets wired into here, and I just turned this one on saying, this I now allow to accept, I want this to accept a new value. Um, the value of W will get written here. So while the electricity is flowing, this field is changing from E to W. That's kind of why I wrote E slash W. But, um, and then, you know, it was F and it's going to change to whatever X is. So really what I'm doing here is I'm taking these four bits and I'm picking a, a nibble, four bits in a row, which nibble to write it to, and all the other ones get ignored. Okay, so this is... Okay, so this is... Um, so this is zero, one, and then... if Oh, so what, one more piece of equipment, and maybe I could have drawn this. As you can imagine, there are going to be times when we have values to write to memory. Sometimes we would like the MAR to not to, to shut off all memory. Maybe, you know, it doesn't mean every time we run instruction, we're not necessarily changing some field in memory. So a decoder has the property that one of the lines is on and all the other lines is off, right? That's by definition a decoder. We want a special decoder that has, also has the option that all lines are shut off, meaning we're not changing any memory, just leave the memory alone. So how can we do that? We add an extra bit, and this gets put into an AND gate with all of these. So if this bit is on, that means allow one of these to be on. And if this bit is off, then shut them all off, because we're not altering memory. So if I want to write to a field in memory, I have to have the hardware, I have to set this guy on, pick the field I want to write to, that will turn one wire on and let the data accept a new value. If I decide I'm not writing to memory at all, I just shut this off, turn this to a zero, which will turn all of these off, and then memory's left alone. So that's what this last slide is. So when I set this one to zero, it doesn't matter what this is, they all get shut off, and now memory is closed. Memory's not accepting any new data. Okay. So really, we did. So <laughs> here's what we did. We covered this material pretty quick. Uh, we started off with simple pieces of equipment. We created NOT gate, AND gates, OR gates, NOT ANDs, NOT ORs. Wired them together like this thing, and it had the property that we can set these wires and freeze these wires. That gave us the idea of a one bit of computer memory, and then we said. What if we want to start transferring memory around? We can take a value and write it into one place, and we could take that concept and make it um, in sets of bits instead of just individual bits. And we can transfer bits around. We could say, I want to read from memory and put its result here. Or if I generate a result, I can take that result and decide where to write it to. So now we can read and write from memory. Okay.